Okay, so uh, today we will uh, start our journey uh, in uh, discussing types of uh, single state and common state uh, amplifiers using uh, bipolar junction transistors. In fact, that circuit we have already discussed last year, uh, the common emitter circuit with a fixed bias uh, or simple base bias circuit and you have noticed that the voltage gain times RO par parallel RC, right? That was the expression of the voltage gain. Now, what was the difficulty associated with that particular? The difficulty is that since you have GM in the gain expression and you know that GM is a function of uh, your thermal voltage and it's also a function of the uh, DC base current, DC collector current. So, what happens? Uh, this gain is very much sensitive to the to the bias bias value. That means the gain is also sensitive to the temperature. It's not stable. So, for which uh, we can have the different types of uh, circuitry, and uh, we have also discussed this one in the last class. Uh, a common emitter amplifier with uh, emitter register connected over there. And and we have noticed that uh, the expression for the voltage gain is approximately given by minus RC upon RD. Or if you just consider the exact expression, it was like minus GM upon 1 plus J1. So you have the GM expression both in the numerator as well as in the denominator. Right. So obviously for that circuit, if we just compare the stability, so this circuit is much more stable as compared to the first one. So these circuits to start with and uh, hopefully you have recognized that both of these two circuits involve a simple fixed bias or base in our uh, BJT biasing course that uh, whenever we uh, consider uh, voltage divider kind of bias then this, circuit of the, this kind of bias is much more stable right so we will analyze uh, the small signal amplification the properties of the small signal amplifier using those uh, voltage divider bias now to start with similar circuit uh, involves a voltage divider bias but uh, the emitter is connected to ground directly right it's a voltage divider bias you have this r1 r2 combination and this rc is there for uh, as the load resistance and emitter here emitter is directly connected to uh, the dc ground or hard ground gradually you'll see that we can also incorporate some emitter resistance over there right now uh, first of all in order to find out the, the gain expression that is our job uh, what you need to do is that you have to uh, draw the small signal uh, equivalent model what is the small signal model for that so for the transistor itself, you know that from base to emitter, you have this resistance R pi. Base to emitter, you have this resistance R pi. And uh, the voltage between these two terminals is nothing but V pi. With the base is positive with respect to the emitter. V pi means V e. When you call V pi, that means V B e. Right. And therefore, we have a voltage dependent current source over there between the collector to emitter, which is given by GM V pi. And you have the register, I mean the output resistance of this uh, given by R0 which is connected between the collector to emitter. So that part is nothing but, so this one is your, this one inside this box is nothing but your small signal model for the bipolar junction transistor. Instead of having this transistor over there, you have this particular box as you already know, right? This is basically the pi model. What else? Now you see in the small model, this is AC, this is DC ground, so DC ground is obviously DC ground, hard ground, and this one is VCC. This collector terminal is connected to VCC through this resistance RC, and VCC stands for what? This stands for some constant voltage supply constant. That means AC wise it is grounded, right? So this point corresponds to AC ground. This point also corresponds to. So from base to ground, from base to AC ground, you have to one between here to here through this path that is R2 and second one is this R1. From base to ground, AC ground, you have one register I can say that which is nothing but R1 parallel R2 because these two registers are there in parallel to AC ground and emitter is already connected to DC ground, DC ground is DC ground. So therefore, between base to emitter you have this resistance that is R1 parallel R2. Okay. What else? Uh, you know, this uh, register RC over there, which is connected between the collector terminal to this is equivalent to AC ground. So, therefore, from collector to emitter, you have another register by RC. Right? And then, uh, uh, since we are just neglecting the effect of the capacitor, but you know that what is the effect or what is the impact of this capacitor? You need to connect the capacitor 
So that's the why the capacitor is important there. The coupling capacitor. But for the time being, let's assume that at the signal frequency, this capacitor is acting as short circuit. Right. So your signal is applied over there, base to ground, and this is having some series resistance that is RS, signal source resistance RS. And for the time being, let's assume that this capacitor is acting as a short circuit. In the next unit, we will study the effect of this capacitor. If I connect the capacitor, obviously, uh, the, the expression of the gain is no longer independent of the previous function of frequency. That we will discuss in the next, next unit. So, uh, that is the signal source uh, with a resistance RS. So, this is connected over there. And we are taking the output from the character over there. So, that is the output terminal, V0. Okay. So, now we are interested in finding out the gain of this amplifier. What is the gain? So, gain is nothing but the ratio of V0 to Vs. V0 to Vs, that is the expression for the voltage gain. So, there are certain tricks. So, uh, if you just simply apply of uh, your circuit theory law, then you will be able to find out the expression for this voltage gain. So, first of all, uh, as you understand that uh, Vs and Gπ, they are not the same. This because you have some voltage divider kind of thing. So, for this, what, what, what do you mean, suppose, uh, the resistance looking at this particular, between these two terminals, ground, to ground between these two terminals, suppose, the resistance is given by Ri. Suppose, this resistance looking between these two terminals is given by Ri. Right? Now, had this been the case, then, how can you find out, yeah. Let me, yes. So, suppose this resistance is given by R, R i over there. Right? Resistance between these two terminals, between this and this. Suppose this resistance is given by R i. So, how to find out this R i? First of all, you need to find out this R i. This is the mechanism to find it out. The resistance between these two terminal, I would like to find the resistance between this terminal and this terminal. Suppose the resistance given by Ri, the input of the amplifier. Input resistance as perceived by the signal. Suppose you are the signal source, this has been connected over there. Uh, this is the signal source uh, uh, amplitude with some uh, source resistance over there, Rs. And this signal source is connected to the two nodes over here, one node over here, another node, and this is connected to the input of the amplifier. Now, yeah, input, of the, input to the amplifier. This has been connected. Right. Now, as a signal source, what you are feeling? Let's say signal source. So, you are the signal source and uh, the two terminals are connected to the, to the amplifier itself. And what is the input? What is the input resistance? As perceived by the signal source. Suppose this resistance is Ri. Right. Then how to find out how, how this expression for this Ri? What is that? How can you find out this expression? What is that? This is basically the voltage between terminal and this terminal divided by the current. So this voltage, suppose this voltage is Vx and suppose this current being drawn is Ix. Now here you see that nothing but so here you have, so between these two terminal you have basically the two resistors connected in parallel. One is R1 parallel R2 and second one is your R pi. So therefore, this resistance Ri as perceived by the signal source, which is nothing but the input resistance of the amplifier, is given by R1 parallel R2 parallel R5. Right? Then, once you have this resistance Ri, and then the signal source is having some interaction Rs, and the voltage that is coupled across this R pi is nothing but G pi. Right? Then what is the relation between V S? And you simply apply the voltage division law, right? Yes. Something like this. This is your Vs. This is Vs. This is your Vs. This one is Rs, right? And what else? Exactly. This resistance is Ri, and that voltage is basically the V pi, the voltage across Ri, right? So what is that? What is V pi then? Ri upon Rs plus Ri, Ri upon Ri multiplied with Vs, that is equal to V pi, and if you simply plug in the values for this Ri, 
then this is nothing but R1 parallel R2 parallel R5 divided by Rs plus R1 parallel R2 by multiplied with Vs. Typically, this R1 parallel R2 parallel R5 that much much larger as compared to the signal source resistance. If I do a sim uh, simple C or say uh, a mic to um, amplify your voice signal. So, microphone is your signal for which your input resistance is say in the order of few tens of ohms. The value of this R1, R2, R pi, you know that last day while, while talking about R pi, we have already seen that the value of R pi is a few kilo ohms, 5 to 7 kilo ohms, 8 kilo ohms, right? And R1, R2, they are typically large because you have to maintain the proper base current. You have to ensure that the device itself operates in the active or linear region. So, therefore, uh, typically R1, R2 is in the range of few kilo ohms. Now, with respect to that, with respect to kilo ohms, now if you have this RS, which is in the order of tens of ohms, so this ratio R1 parallel R2 parallel R pi upon Rs plus R1 parallel R2 parallel R pi is typically very large and close to unit. Obviously, it is less than 1 because you have Rs over there, non zero Rs over there. It will be less obviously, but it is close to unity. Very much close to unity. And uh, some loss will take place across Rs because some, some voltage will be, will be lost across this Rs, which is known as the coupling loss. And, and now, if you have very high value of this input resistance, so last day we have discussed that uh, depending upon the on the input resistance of the amplifier, you can you can model the signal source either as a, as a voltage source or as a current source. Right. Now, if your input signal, I mean, signal source resistance is, is smaller with respect to the amplifier uh, input resistance, then you can always regard this input as a as a voltage input. Now, here, typically, this RS is as compared to the input resistance of the amplifier, at least for this configuration, which is known as the common emitter configuration, because emitter is the common terminal for which your input resistance is in the range of few kilo ohms and the signal source resistance is typically small in the range of ohms, tens of ohms. So therefore, uh, I can regard uh, the, the coupling loss will be very small and V pi is given by this factor multiplied with Vs and this factor, this entire factor R1 parallel R2 parallel R pi, this entire factor is close to, almost close to unity, but it is it should be less than unity. Then what about the expression for V0? What is the expression for V0? This current is Gm V pi. Right, so obviously that can be minus gm v pi, right? And this kind is flowing through this R O R O R C parallel combination. So therefore, your v naught is given by minus gm v pi times R C, right? So that is expression for v naught minus gm v pi times R R O parallel. RC. Now we are in the position of finding out the voltage gain. What is that? V O upon V S. We have represented V O in terms of v pi. We have also represented Yes, in terms of V pi. So then if you just plug in those values, then ultimately what you are getting is this voltage gain expression AV is given by minus gm R0 parallel RC multiplied adductor. So already you have seen this one, minus gm R0 parallel RC last day. You have already seen, right? Whenever you have incorporated uh, minus gm R0 parallel RC. If you don't have uh, this kind of, I have only a simple uh, fixed bias, something like that. Suppose you have a fixed bias. Suppose you don't have this, you have only one resistance over there. Say so let it be Rb. You have seen that minus Gm into uh, R parallel RC. And since you are now this time you have also incorporated some non-zero source resistance. So the incorporation of this non-zero source resistance, some coupling loss will take place. Because when you know, the input is applied over there, you understand that not the entire input will be coupled, some input will be lost, some voltage. Right. That is known as the coupling loss. So that is the factor which uh, this coupling loss uh, is accounted and ultimately that is the expression for the voltage gain, right? Remember once again, it is not that much stable because it involves GM. It involves GM in the numerator, there is no GM in the denominator. That means if, if you have some change over there in the temperature, if you have some change in the beta variation, if you have some change in the ICO variation, Leakage kind variation, then obviously it is expected to vary. That you don't expect. But this particular circuit, so whenever you have this particular kind of circuit, then you understand how to how to analyze the circuit. If if the circuit is uh, having some voltage divided kind of biasing, then how to analyze this? You understand from this particular analysis. Okay. And then uh, we are trying to find out the input and the output resistance. So, input resistance we have already found out that was given by R1 parallel R2 parallel R pi, right? And what is the 
what about the output resistance? How to find out the output resistance? What is the mechanism? How to find out the output resistance? I'm not come from the from that. I'm not. What is the what is the uh, what, what 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 technique you should uh, adopt for the calculate for the calculation of this output resistance? What technique you should follow? For output resistance, obviously you have to make all the independent voltage and current source inactive. All the independent source should be made inactive. So, do you have an independent voltage source or current source here? Independent. Identify? No current source there, but yeah, you have found out one voltage source, one current source. One voltage source, one current source, right? Out of the which one is dependent? VF is the voltage source, that's an independent voltage source. And CMP pi is a current source, dependent current source, voltage dependent current source. So you have to make this in a short circuit, right? And that should be there, GMT pi. That is arrangement, first of all, while calculating the uh, output resistance. To make all the independent voltage and current source inactive, independent, not the dependent. Then you have to identify what, what is my output terminal. Output terminal is a collector terminal. With respect to what? Emitter is my common terminal. From this time. You can say common emitter configuration. You have noticed, this is my output terminal. So now, what happens? <coughs> then what happens? Uh, the circuit looks something like that. The modified circuit. Sorry. It's creating a problem. That is the resistance RS. This one is RS. This one is RI. And that voltage is VPI. This one is GM VPI. And you have, let me call this is R0 parallel RC. Right? And then, you have to identify what is my output terminal. Terminal is the collector terminal. Okay. So once you identify this one, then you just connect some test voltage between these two nodes. You connect some test voltage, let it be Vx, and suppose the current being drawn by the circuit is Ix. Find out the ratio Vx upon Ix. Okay. So what is that? This is nothing but R0 parallel RC. Output resistance. So, for output resistance calculation, you have to follow this one. Okay? And uh, the expression that you are getting is R0 parallel RC. Typically, RC is in the range of kilo ohms, R0 is in the range of hundreds of kilo ohms, and therefore, both of these input and the output resistance they are in the range of kilo ohms. So, the takeaway from is that for the common emitter configuration, the input and the output resistance both are in the order of few kilo Moderate kilo ohms. Typically, R1 is in the range of few tens of kilo ohms, R2 is in the range of few tens of kilo ohms, and R5 is in the range of within 10 kilo ohms, also 5 kilo ohms, 8 kilo ohms, 10 kilo ohms, something like that, depending upon the value of your base current, like the, the DC base current. And R0 is typically large in the range of hundreds of kilo ohms, R6 is in the range of few kilo ohms, and therefore, both of these input and the output resistance they are in the range of kilo ohms for this common emitter configuration. Okay, so now uh, with this understanding, now let's make the circuit a bit complicated. This time, what we have done, this time we have incorporated one emitter resistor. Right. You have the voltage divider bias, this R1 R2 combination still there, and we have incorporated last time this was connected to ground, DC ground. This time we have connected some resistor RE between the emitter and the ground. Let's try to find out what is my expression for the voltage gain. So once again, uh, this is, uh, is well known. This is a part of the circuit, uh, I mean the part of the BJT.
simplicity and there for simplicity we have just neglected r not we have not incorporated r not assuming that r not is very large if not you have to uh, consider this r not should be placed there between these two terminal actually r not should be there if you are very much accurate in the your calculation then r not should be connected over there and that makes the the entire calculation complete but since r not is typically large so and to, in order to make the uh, analysis uh, easier so we have just neglected r not over there and apart from that now if we just once say look at the circuit so you have this r pi between the base parameter and you have this gmp pi between current right and so now this is the part of your bjt then what about the part of the other other i mean the part of the circuits itself you have the different resistors you have four resistors r1 r2 rc re all of them are biasing resistors r1 r2 rc and re and how to connect them where to connect them how to connect them where to connect them. you understand that this this terminal is grounded this is hard ground dc ground that means this is also given to ac ground this is uh, it is also given to ac ground so between base terminal to ac ground one second you have two register from uh, here to here you have r2 from here to here you have r1 so r1 and r2 they are in connected between base and the ac ground last time it was connected between the base and the emitter because emitter was at ground this time emitter is not at ground so therefore you have to connect this register r1 parallel r2 between base and ac ground not between base and emitter right last time your emitter was grounded so that's why this r parallel combination was connected between the base and the emitter but this time emitter is not grounded the emitter is having some other potential this is not grounded so this is connected to base to ground ac ground in fact this is a small signal model so all the ground that we have made, that we have uh, shown over there so this is basically the ac ground in the small signal model the ground means ac ground right so r1 parallel r2 is there between base to ac ground and what about r c is connected between the collector to supply that means collected to ac ground right this is means ac ground so collector to we have this r c and we have another resistor that is r e r e is connected and the dc ground dc ground means ac ground right so emitter is connected between the i mean this r is connected between the emitter terminal and the uh, ac ground terminal okay what's your question dito equivalent circuit yeah this is the com combined circuit this is a combined amplifier circuit okay. this is a combined amplifier circuit and this analysis can be done in two ways first we have observed the dc uh, analysis part that means the of the defined base current collector current emitter current collector emitter voltage that we have just uh, last unit we have found out what will be the expression for that is depending upon the voltage divided i mean it's a voltage divided bias now depending upon the exact value of this r1 r2 and re you have to select whether it's a dc voltage divided bias or non dc voltage divided bias and accordingly you have to find out the the current the base current collector current and the collector emitter voltage so dc calculation you have to carry out first now once you part dc calculation then the different uh, uh, parameter in connection with your uh, the bjt operations like gm r not r pi that you can calculate you must be knowing these expressions for example that uh, gm is something like that yeah so gm is so gm is given by icq upon pt so once you know this icq to calculate this icq then you can find out r pi is given by vt upon ibq what is your vt that is the thermal voltage kt upon q in order to find out those gm r pi remember that gm r pi r not what is r not r not is given by ba upon icq so these are the three components gm r pi r not these are the three components of this small signal model r pi is the resistance Between base to emitter, this resistance R pi, this resistance R pi, this one, this GM voltage dependent current source, and this R not. So, in order to draw the small signal, you have to perform the DC analysis first. Once you do the DC analysis, then you you know what will be my base current, and if you know 
the value of 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 and once you measure those values i, b, q, i, c, q and all, then you can find out what should be my gm, r, pi and r, not those small signal parameters. And once you get the small signal parameters, this is a combined circuit. So this circuit can be used, this circuit can be used for analysis. And while you perform the DC analysis, this AC signal should be met inactive. That means you are not part of the circuit. You are not looking into this part. You are not, so this part you are not looking into. Because there is a capacitor and capacitor will block all that uh, the DC. You will only so that's a that's a combined circuit. During DC analysis, this part you just neglect because you have a capacitor, a barrier. Capacitor is there that will stop the DC current to flow. It will act as an open circuit. So only you have to consider this part and that many times in the last unit. And once you do this. Then you find out base current, collector current, current, all these things. And accordingly, you have to select what should be a Q point. Right? Once this is done, and based on the base current, collector current values, now you can draw the small signal model. And once you draw the small signal model, this time, you have to make all the DC component inactive. For DC analysis, you are making AC component inactive. This should be inactive during DC analysis. And while performing the AC analysis or small signal analysis, you are just neglecting the DC component. So once, whenever you have some DC value, you are considering that DC value to be AC wise, that is constant. AC wise, that is ground, at ground level. So this is DC ground, hard ground, that is equivalent. And you have a supply voltage over here, VCC. So basically what, what do you have? VCC means what? You have basically, uh, you have a battery like this, no? Plus my VCC. So when you perform the DC analysis, this battery is there. But when you perform this AC analysis, this battery is inactive, that means this is completely shortage. Right. So actually this particular module, this is derived. This is derived from this one. This is the actual circuit, the combined circuit which involves DC as well as AC. And DC analysis we have already done in the last unit. And from this we have ultimately obtained what is my signal model. And that small signal model will be used for the calculation of the voltage gain, current gain, and all these things. Here. Okay, so. Okay, so now with this circuit, we are interested in finding out this expression of, of V out upon of Vs. So, first of all, once again, let's try to identify the different. Uh, yeah. So, let's try to find out the different. input resistance. So suppose uh, looking at this particular point, looking at this particular point, let's assume that the, the resistance is RIB and uh, looking at this point, suppose the resistance is RI. Okay. Looking at this point, this resistance is RIB. So that means what? So we are saying that we are saying suppose you have one whose value is given by RIB, right? Looking at this point, then what is your RI? What is RI? What is the relation between RI and RIB? RI is equal to this R1 parallel R2 parallel RIB. Quite obvious. If you do not incorporate R1 parallel R2, then the resistance is RIB. If you incorporate this one, then the resistance is RI. So RI is given by R1 parallel R2 parallel RIB. Right? Then the thing is that how to calculate this RIB? How to calculate RIB? How to calculate RIB? The same mechanism. What is the voltage at sorry? What is the voltage at this point and what is the current being drawn? Take the ratio. Take the ratio. Right. So RIB is this particular distance. I mean looking at this particular point between this point and this ground terminal, the resistance is given by RIB. That is not considered 
R1 parallel R2 yet. From this point to this point, if you connect some multimeter, ohm meter, the resistance given by from this point to ground, right? And if you incorporate this R2, then if you just connect your multimeter terminal over there with inclusion of this R1 parallel R2, then the resistance is given by Ri. So Ri is R1 parallel R2 parallel Ri. That is easy, but how to calculate this Rib? So this is basically this resistance from here to here. That means what? The voltage at a particular point divided by the current, the current being drawn. So what is that voltage? That voltage is V in. Right. So then I have to relate V in v pi and v r e. What is v pi? v pi is basically the voltage developed across the resistance r pi, that is i v times r pi and what is v r e? v r e is the current flowing through r e multiplied with r e. What is the current flowing through r e? Emitter current, that is the base canvas collector current. So i v times 1 plus beta, right? So i v into 1 plus beta times r e. Right, and then if you take V in upon I V, that will give you this expression R pi plus one plus beta times I V in upon I V. That is our R I V. V in upon I V. Sir, I V into one plus beta. Oh, I V is total current, emitter current. What is emitter current? Uh -huh. This emitter current I E. This I E is I V plus I C. Equal to IV plus beta IV. Right. So V in is equal to IV R pi IV into 1 plus beta times R e. From that you can calculate R IV as R pi plus beta. And then this whole thing is in parallel with R1 parallel R2 and ultimately this is to R I. Okay. Any doubt up to this? Simple, uh, some circuit theory law. I have to apply the KCL, KVN and all these things and some properties of the transistor. Clear? Now, if this one is your, this resistance is Ri between here to here, if this resistance is Ri and you have this Rs over there, what is the relation between V in and Vs? Once again, the, the distribution law, Ri upon Ri plus Rs times Vs. Clear? Simple voltage division law. Last time we also done the same thing. The only difference was that last time this was directly connected to AC ground, but this time this emitter is connected to AC ground through resistance RD. Clear? Then what is the voltage gain? V out upon yes. Same formula. So what is V out? Once again, since we have just negative over there, so if this kind is GMP pi, so that kind must be minus GMP pi flowing in this. That is flowing through RC, so uh, voltage developed at the collector terminal minus GM V pi times RC. In fact, that is somewhat less than that because some kind will also flow through R0. No, because we have just neglected, you should have some resistance over there. That we have neglected, R0. So basically this current is minus GM V pi. A part of this current will flow through this R0 and the rest of the part through RC. Right? But since R0 is typically large with respect to RC, so that's why we have neglected and we have assumed that okay, the entire current will flow through RC. So approximately your Vi minus Gm V pi times RC. And what is minus Gm V pi? This is our beta, beta times I. We have, we have just said that relation last day that this pi model and the H parameter model they are equivalent to some extent. This GM V pi and beta IV, they are equivalent. They can also represent this as minus beta IV times uh, Okay. Then uh, the voltage expression, I mean the uh, voltage gain expression, if I just consider this one, uh, then it, this is nothing but V of Vs, the voltage gain, V out upon Vs. What is V out? V out is minus beta IV times RC and over there. So minus beta RC and then 
we are representing this uh, IB as uh, V in RB because IB is equal to V in upon RB from this expression. RIB is equal to V in upon IB, so I can represent IB as V in upon RIB because ultimately you have to represent in terms of V, not in terms of V in. So therefore, it becomes minus beta RC multiplied with V in upon RIB into 1 upon Vs. And already you know this expression V in upon Vs. V in upon Vs is RI by RI plus RS, right? So then, what we are getting? So the final expression for this is given by minus beta RC divided by this one R pi plus beta times R into this one. Typically, what happens? Typically, this uh, Ri is much, much larger as compared to Rs because as I have already told you, Rs is in the range of few tens of ohms and Ri is in the range of ohms. So, therefore, uh, that part, this factor is almost close to unity. This factor is close to unity, right? And uh, this factor is close to unity, Ri upon Ri plus Rs. And but here, what you find is 1 plus beta times Ri is much, much greater than R, R pi because there is a magnitude by a factor of beta. You, if you consider that R pi and R i, they are almost in the same range, in the range of Q, then beta 1 plus beta times R i, that's a, that's a magnification of the resistance by a factor of beta. So, this 1 plus beta times R i is much, much larger as compared to R pi. So, therefore, you can have this ratio as close to beta R c by 1 plus beta times R i. Right, and if beta is large, then second equivalent to or close to minus R c upon R i. So, ultimately, that is the exact expression. If you just calculate the exact value, then this is the big expression minus beta rc upon r pi plus 1 plus beta times ri, then you have this ri upon ri plus rs. And if you do the some approximation over there, then ultimately uh, it is equal, equivalent to minus rc upon r. Okay? Okay, now let's move to a very important part of our AC analysis right at this moment. Here, so you have seen, uh, so far you have seen aspects. In one case, you have seen that your emitter resistance was not there. The emitter terminal was connected to AC ground or DC ground, right? And now that there is a full register, one register RD is connected between the emitter and the ground. Now, this is a typical circuit for where you find there are basically two registers. Or rather, I can say that this emitter register RE is divided into two parts, two parts RE1 and RE2. And out of that, one part is out of that RE1 plus RE2. So I can, I can consider something like that. Like you have previously you have only one RE. This time, this RE is divided into one is RE1, second one is RE2. Right. And interest done, one of this RE, this RE2, this lower one, is also having some capacitor in shunt with this RE. So another capacitor is here in parallel with this RE, RE2. So what is the implication of this? What is the implication of this particular structure? First, to the DC analysis, where it's a new kind of circuit, it's a, uh, can you tell me what kind of, uh, I mean, uh, what is the biasing? This one? Voltage divided? It's not voltage divided. There is no voltage division kind of thing on there. The base side, you don't have a voltage division. See here, there are two bias voltage. One is VEE. -E. -E. Oh. Emitter side also you have a voltage over there. And interestingly, as I've already told you, that for DC analysis, as I've already told you for the DC analysis, this capacitor should block the DC. So for DC analysis, this part you should not look into. Right. So if you just once again take a look at the base side, you have one resistor which is connected to ground only. As of now, you have seen that one. You have seen that from base to 
type. There might be some connection through some register, something like that. Hopefully, you have noticed this one. This kind of, if I just consider. You have seen now this kind of circuit, VCC, RB, RC, the simplest term. That means from base to, if I just consider this terminal, so if I just consider this terminal, so this is connected to VCC through some register RB or what you can also have this instrument. RB desk, something like that, voltage division kind of thing, right, that this base is connected, base is connected to supply to some extent, you don't want connection yet, no, have you seen this kind of connection? As of now, base is connected, base is connected to ground through some resistance. So from where this base emitter junction will be forward based. But you have not seen it yet. This kind of biasing. Have you seen this kind of biasing? We have seen we have this type of passing. We have also seen this kind of passing. We have also seen this kind of biasing. Right. We have seen all these three types of biasing. Fixed bias. Rather, you have also seen this type of biasing. This one is easy. So you have seen all these four types of biasing. Fixed bias, collected to base bias, voltage divider bias without emitter resistor, voltage divider bias with emitter resistor. So these three cases, or four cases rather, you have seen that the base is connected to VCC by some means, either through this resistance RB or through this to or through this uh, another resistance RF or through this, so somehow it is connected, but as of now, you have not seen this kind of circuit. I mean, if I have, say, suppose this is grounded for the time being, this is also grounded, this is supply, this is C, this is RB, this is RC. <laughs> No, for that case, uh, the circuit itself is not biased until and unless your uh, input itself is having some non zero bias. Otherwise, the circuit will not operate. Isn't it? Suppose I would like to install non zero base current, non zero collector current. Is it possible using this circuit? Non-zero base current. Suppose I, I, I am not bothered about the, the signal source itself. I would like to establish some non-zero base current. So for each of these four cases, 
two, three, four. For each of these four cases, you have some non-zero base current. Right. But here, if I just consider this particular circuit, this circuit, emitter is grounded, base is also grounded. Right? So if I apply some KV to here, so zero to zero. That means uh, this what is zero. So base is not forward fast. Right? So what additional thing you can do over here? So that uh, okay, RP is ground, base to ground, there is an RP resistance only only one resistance RP. But still I would like to make this circuit operate. Yes, yeah, so what you need to do is that I, this time, this terminal should not be connected to ground. Rather, you should have a over there. Minus plus. VEE. -E, like this. Right? In that case, what you find from here to here, from here to here, now minus 0 to negative. If I just consider that is 0, that is negative. So, this time base to meter voltage, this time is positive. Which you require. Or what you can do, obviously, you can also include some resistance over there. Like this. Instead of connecting this one directly, what I can do, I can connect some resistance and then V. This is RD. Right. Now, Particular circuit, the circuit under consideration, the resistor RE is divided into two different segments. One is RE1, second one is RE2. And one of these two, out of these two, the lower one, RE2, is also having an associated capacitor in parallel with that. Now, whenever we perform the DC analysis, obviously the lower capacitor will not be taken into account. So, first to perform the DC analysis, let's, uh, let's perform the DC analysis first, and then you will see what happens to the small signal analysis. So, for the DC analysis, this is the circuit, right? You don't have this capacitor, the rest part of this will not be incorporated because the capacitor will block, it will act here, this capacitor will act as a barrier, right? So, you have only this RB from base to ground, you have RC from collector supply to uh, uh, collector. You have two resistors in series, RE1 and RE2, and you have a minus V over there. Okay? Now you go for applying two Kirchhoff's voltage law, one at the base emitter loop, second one at the collector emitter loop. The base emitter loop, this voltage, so here you have this voltage minus V over there. So what do you find? This is equal to this drop plus this drop plus this drop plus this drop. So you have four drops. One drop across RE1, one drop across RE2, one drop across RB, and the base emitter drop. Right? So IBQ RB plus VB on plus RE1 plus French IEQ. This kind is obviously the base current plus the collector current, that is the emitter current. So it should be IEQ one plus IEQ. Right? So V is equal to IBQ. VB on plus RD on plus RD times IEQ. So from V, VB on and uh, beta is given and IBQ, RB and RD on and RD2 if all the uh, uh, register values are given, then you can very easily calculate what should be my IBQ. Isn't it? IEQ is given by 1 plus beta times IBQ. So from that you can uh, find out what is the explosion of this IBQ from this particular equation, from this equation itself, right? And then if you go for this uh, correct emitter loop, for correct emitter loop what do you find? Uh, VC there, that is equal to IC to RC, this drop, VCQ, this drop, plus RE1 plus RE2 times IEQ, this drop, and then you have minus there, equal to 0. And then if you know IB1 from this expression, from this expression you will be able to find out IB1, uh, IB2. What is the value? 
PEE is equal to I U. Let me write it over here. So PEE is equal to I B Q times I B Q times R B plus R E one plus R E two times I B Q into one plus beta plus V B E on. So therefore, I can find out the expression for I B Q as V E E minus V B E on divided by R B plus R E one plus R E two one plus beta. So once all these values are given to you, V E is given to you, V B E on you know for for the transistor to operate. And uh, different resistor values R B, R E one, R E two. Then you will be able to find out, and beta is given. Then you will be able to find out. Once I B Q is given, you will be able to find I C Q. We run I I B Q. And then if you just plug in those values over there, then you will be able to find out what is my V C Q. Right. Now once you do that, then I like to show you this part. This part is well known to you. so i think uh, from that i think you'll be able to find out the vcq expression what is that vcq vcq is equal to vcc plus v <coughs> and then you have this minus icq rc minus r1 plus r2 times iq and what is the relation between ic and i ic is equal to alpha times i right alpha times i that means 1 plus beta by beta so that is the final expression vcq is equal to vcc plus ve minus ic plus 1 plus beta by beta into r1 plus r2 now we are in the position in drawing the load line for that configuration because that's a new configuration to you and intentionally i have incorporated i have used that particular circuit discussion you understand why get wrong <laughs> now once you get this one once you get this expression for which involves vcq with the ic draw the dc load line so what is the way of how to draw the dc load line what is the mechanism what is the mechanism how to draw dc load line How can I draw this load line? First of all, you have to identify the points. So VCQ is given by VCC plus VE minus IC into this entire factor, right? So you have this axis as the voltage axis, T axis. This axis is the current axis, IC axis. Now, if IC is equal, to, what is the expression for your VCQ? VCC plus VE. Over here, if you put IC is equal to zero, VCQ is equal to VCC plus V. So IC zero means VCC is equal to VCC is equal to VCC plus so that point, right? And then VCQ is equal to zero. VCQ part is equal to zero. What is IC? VCC plus V upon this entire thing. Yes. VCC plus V upon this entire thing, right? Once you identify these two points, extreme points, you'll be able to find out the uh, draw the uh, load. You connect these two points. What is the slope? Is given by okay minus one by this entire factor R C plus one plus beta into R E one plus R E two. That is the slope. Slope line. Now, as of now, you people are familiar with the DC load line. DC load line, but as of now you don't have an idea. Okay, if there is a DC load line, can there be an AC load line as well? 
I have not discussed anything regarding the AC load line. We have discussed only the DC load line. Now, this particular circuit is very beautiful for the explanation of this AC load line. Okay. Do you have any problem in understanding the DC analysis for this particular circuit, which involves emitter bias? It involves emitter bias. You have a collector bias as well as emitter bias. Dual bias. You have the collector bias, which is it? As a bias, that is VE. Remember that VE is negative. So minus 10 volt, minus 5 volt, minus 8 volt, like that. Okay. Any doubt? Any confusion in understanding the, the DC point? No. Okay, now in the position in moving into the next step, that means the AC analysis part. Yeah. Okay. So for AC analysis, first of all, you have to replace the transistor. You have to substitute the transistor by its equivalent small signal model. What is that? You have between base to emit pi and along across this R pi developed is V pi. Between collector to emitter, you have a voltage dependent current source, Gm V pi. And you have collector to emitter, you have a resistance R mod. So this entire thing, this is equivalent, I mean, this is nothing but your NPN bipolar junction transistor, which is used in this particular amplifier circuit. Right? What else? Okay, from here to here, you have a resistor from base to AC ground or base to DC ground. So from base, this is the base terminal. So base to ground, we have this RB. Here. Yeah. From collector to VCC supply, you have RC. And supply means what? Supply means what? AC ground? Supply, AC ground. AC ground. So, AC ground, you have RC. Now comes the beauty. From emitter to ground, from emitter to VEE, you have two registers in series, RE1 and RE2. Previously, the previous circuit, that capacitor was not there. So what you have done, you have connected one resistor from uh, this character terminal to AC ground. But this time, out of two registers, RE1 and RE2, the is having some capacitor in parallel with it. What I have, what I have told you, that whenever in this particular module, whenever the capacitor, no, for DC, that is open. For AC or small signal, that should be shorted. Right. So that's why, since you have this particular capacitor, coupling capacitor CC, so we have not incorporated that capacitor and we have considered, okay, this is connected to this terminal direct, short circuited. Isn't it? This is your input signal, VSRS, this combination. Actually, there's a capacitor there. Right, but we have assumed that the signal frequency is high enough or moderately high enough so that the state of this capacitor can be simply neglected. Right? So that means if you have a capacitor, if you have a capacitor, this is equivalent to a short circuit. Suppose A to B, you have a capacitor, this is short circuit, like this. So that's why this capacitor is not there in this particular picture. Similarly, across RE2, you have this capacitor, CE. So we should adopt the same procedure. So from here to here, since you have a capacitor, so what I should do? Short. Short it to ground. So, DC analysis, both of these two registers were there, RE1 and RE2, both of them are present. You have seen all the calculation of this VB, uh, your IBQ and all these things, you have this RE1, sorry, both of them are present. Because that time, the capacitor was not active. The capacitor was inactive for DC operation. But for AC operation, the capacitor 
and it is making the two terminal shorted. The signal frequency is high enough so that it is shorted. So during the AC analysis, out of these two register R1, R2, which one will be there in the circuit? AC. Uh, R1. Only R1 will be there because the effect of R2 is suppressed. Huh? Hmm. That means if you have some signal current, so basically the, from here, if I call uh, this terminal to be say point X, so at point X, whenever the current reaches at this particular point, it will find two branches, two paths, one through RE2, other one through this capacitor. And the capacitor is of so low resistance, so low impedance, so therefore the current will follow that path. Current will not flow through RE2, the entire current will flow through. So as a matter of fact, I can say that the current is actually bypassed. Right, the current is bypassed through this path. And therefore, this capacitor, whenever it is connected between the emitter terminal to the ground, with some register, this type of capacitor is known as the bypass capacitor. This capacitor CE, so here we have uh, considered that out of two, I mean, if we have uh, two registers in series, R1, R2, out of two, only one, or the, this capacitor, bypass capacitor is connected, only one register. Across RE1, there is no, no capacitor, but across RE2, so the effect of RE1 is present in the AC analysis, but the effect of RE2 is absent, and the current, small signal current, will flow through this bypass capacitor, not through this RE2. So, whenever we perform the uh, small signal, whenever we uh, draw the small signal model, that time, here to here, since this is already grounded, from here, this is shorted, so now this is your new ground terminal. For DC analysis, this is a new ground terminal, right? Yes. So from here to from emitter to ground, we have only one resistor which is equal to R1. Right? Anybody having any confusion in understanding that bypass effect? Yes or no? Is it clear? Okay. Then, then, if I draw the equivalent small signal model, circuit wise, not this uh, model, rather the circuit wise, how does it look like then? Right. You have this transistor. This is RB, right? Then you have RC there, okay? RD one there. And this is also grounded, right? And here you have the signal source, Vs, Rs. Okay. Now let's assume that this current which is flowing is your small signal IC. This current is your IE. Clear? Now we have derived this, we have derived this, this is a small signal equivalent circuit, not the small signal equivalent model, this is a small signal equivalent model. And this one is a small signal equivalent circuit, which is synthesized, which is derived from our original, this was the original circuit, this circuit is the original circuit, and from where, this circuit, this is the small signal circuit. And this circuit was the equivalent DC circuit. I mean, the which, cor I mean, which corresponds to the DC components, I mean, the DC voltage and currents only. 
This is my, so this is the mother circuit. Here, this one. This is the mother circuit. This circuit is the mother circuit. Right? Now, it is, now I am decomposing this circuit in two different elements for two different types of analysis. For TC analysis, I will consider this one for which all the capacitors are absent, all the signal sources are absent. And for AC analysis, for AC analysis, we have considered that particular circuit, right? For which all the DC and capacitor is fully active. It is providing zero impedance. Now, had this been the case, now if we just simply uh, take a look at the uh, 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 terminal, right? Uh, can you simply uh, draw the, uh, I mean, can you simply write down the expression for this uh, KVL at the terminal? If I apply KVL, what should be the expression then? What is the expression? So from which which output loop, correct limiter loop, this loop. So you have basically the three voltage drop. Yes. One is across RC, second one is across correct limiter, third one is across RD1. Right? So the current that is flowing through IC RC, RC. plus your EC plus minus, EC. and then you have the current flowing one is IP. So what I can write, ICRC plus VCE plus IE RE1 equal to 0, right? And since uh, IC and IE, if I, if I answer the beta, then IC and IE, they are almost close to, I mean, they are almost close to each other, IC and IE. Otherwise, you can write down the expression, actual expression for IC, as you know. What is IC? Alpha times? Alpha times IE. Right? Typically, alpha is close to, uh, I mean, uh, it's close to unity since beta is very large. Beta you must be knowing the expression for alpha, what is beta by 1 plus beta. So, this is basically beta upon 1 plus. Now, let's say 100, 150. In that case, I can consider, okay, uh, this is IC and IE. In that case, IC can be approximate to IE. Otherwise, you can write down like beta by 1 plus beta. What happens? VCE, ICRC plus VCE plus IERD1 is equal to 0. Then, V is equal to I minus IC times RC plus RD1. Right? Now, once we get this one, nah, let me just erase this part. Now, once we get this one, this expression, Vc is equal to minus Ic times Rc plus Rd1. This is another current voltage expression relates the output current to the output voltage. What is the output current? That is the collector current. What is the output voltage? That is the collector meter voltage. Now, this particular equates the output voltage to the output current. Vc is equal to Ic minus Ic times Rc plus Rd1. Right. Is equal to minus Ic times Rc plus Rd1. Clear? So, remember I have drawn the, the DC load line. So, typically the DC load line is drawn with respect to the DC current and DC voltage. And this voltage, this particular voltage, this is all small, small VC, small IC, all small. So now, if I would like to draw the DC current voltage along with the small signal current voltage, so I can draw it on a combined scale or combined axis for which, for which this voltage is small v capital C and this kind is small i capital C. Remember the notation? Can you remember the notation? Whenever all capital like is like V C E that means D C. Whenever I write C small C small E, that means the time varying part A C and if I have small V capital E, that means the total instantaneous. Now I would like to draw what? I would like to Observe the variation of the DC current as well as uh, current with the DC voltage as well as the AC current with the DC voltage. So I would like to have this axis as the total instantaneous voltage and current. So 
this axis is small v capital C and this axis is the small i capital C and already we have load line which is the DC load line with the slope equal to minus 1 upon RC plus this entire plus beta upon beta RC R1 plus R1. Okay. Now, suppose uh, I have got some beta, uh, I have got a fixed beta, I have got some IV and for which this is my uh, corresponding ICQ value and the corresponding VCQ is this one. So, this is my DC operating point or cuisson operating point, right? Because there is a set of characteristics curves, output characteristics I have selected, this to be my DC operating point. Say for example, now this point corresponds to what? This DC point corresponds to This DC point corresponds to what? IC and VC, ICQ and VCQ. VCQ and ICQ. That means this particular voltage, uh, this particular current is ICQ, this particular current is ICQ, this particular voltage is VCQ. Right? And whenever I say it's a pure DC, that means this point corresponds to pure DC. That means pure DC means what? Zero AC. Right? This point corresponds to 0 AC. It's a pure DC means 0 AC. This point. And already we got this expression. One second, I am writing it down. The expression for this VCE, small VCE. What was that? What is the expression for this small VCE? What is the expression for small VCE? Right now we have just calculated from that loop. Minus IC times RC plus RD1. That's a PAC. No DC involved. That's a all small. Right? This is pure AC signal, time varying signal. Now, now if you would like to plot this. XY plot, small IC, that means the pure AC involving no DC component and small VC is the pure collected to emitter AC voltage involving no DC, right. Does it pass through origin? Yes. I see. Uh, y is equal to MX, if I consider Y is equal to MX? Minus one slope and uh, origin. Yes. It is passing through origin. Origin of what? I am plotting this. This is nothing but a pure AC signal. Origin of that means origin of zero AC. Origin is what? Origin is zero zero point. What zero zero? This is AC zero zero. Not AC zero zero. Isn't it? Why is it name X? Now this point. This point is your the operating point. That means AC origin, no zero, no no AC, right? It's a pure DC. That means no AC. So this point corresponds to this is a question point. So Q point means whenever I write Q point, that means pure DC, or I can say origin of AC. Origin means 0, 0. Right? So, therefore, already I have got this expression. Vc is equal to minus IC times RC plus RD1. It passes through origin of AC. That means 0, 0 of AC. So, I have to locate the 0, 0 of AC. What is that? This point. Q point. Right? So, once you know the point of passing for any straight line, what additional information do you require to draw the straight line? You know the point of passing, you know the slope, you need to know the slope. Do you know this? What is that slope? Minus 1 up, no? not minus 1. Why is it called MX? What is Y here? IC. IC is Y minus 1 up. You know the Point of passing, 
zero zero. It passes through origin. Origin of what? Not origin of this. Not this zero zero. This is the total instantaneous zero zero, and this is the AC zero zero. Right? Now you know the point of passing that is zero zero. AC zero zero. What is the slope? Minus one upon R C one. Right? Previously, you have drawn the DC load line with the slope of minus one upon R C plus something, and this time this slope is how much? Minus one upon plus R D one. At least, at, 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 actually, you should have some beta by beta over there also as well, isn't it? But still, but but still, the effect is completely absent, right? R E two is not there. Actually, what you have done, we have just neglected the uh, the alpha. I mean, we have assumed that alpha to be equal to one. We have just neglected the radius one plus by beta that we have neglected. We assume that that is equal to one. But actually, you should incorporate that one. One plus beta by beta. But R two is not there. So therefore, this is much much steeper. That was the slope for DC load, right? Minus because if you look from that side, that will give you the notation of minus. From this side, that will give you the notation of the the absolute value. What was the one upon R C plus this entire thing? And this time you have one upon R C plus R E one only. So which one is larger? So which slope is larger? Uh -huh. The second slope. Second slope. Second. Because this time, for the first case, for the DC case, for DC, the slope was my. I'm just considering the mod of this, one by R C plus. Yes. So. Oh, let me is it here so for dc case the slope was slope mod of slope for dc that was 1 upon rc plus let me forget about 1 plus beta by beta say r1 Right, and the slope mod of this slope for AC that is given by one upon R C plus one. Which one is larger? Which slope is larger? Second, second one. Very small. Second one is larger. So tan theta is large. That means much more steeper. So that's why if we just consider this slope, this angle. Small as compared to this angle. This one is much more steeper, the AC load line, and this slope, this load line is much more flat. And now, if you would like to find out the variation of this small signal, then this corresponds to this particular line corresponds to zero AC, and then you have this fluctuation over there. You have this base current fluctuation over there, and based on which you have this corresponding collectometer fluctuation over there. Clear. Yeah. Once you have two registers, I mean this emitter register is divided into segments, R E, and one part of it is bypassed. The other part is still there, and it makes a huge difference in understanding the DC load line and the AC load line. Both of them are not same because if we just observe the output circuit, this collector register. R They are in the DC analysis as well as for the AC analysis. If you don't distance between the emitter to ground, then obviously the slope of the DC load line and the slope of the AC load line will be the same. But if you have one register R E one, which is not bypassed, and another register R E two, which is bypassed, so during the DC analysis, both R E one and R E two will be there along with R C and all. But during the analysis, the effect of R E two will not be there; only R E one will be there. And that makes a corresponding change in the slope of the load line. 
So sometimes you can say that this they are basically overlapping with each other, but if the corresponding components are different or they are by extent, in that case you'll find that these two load lines will be having different slopes. Okay. So this ends our discussion on common emitter amplifier to some extent, and in the next class we will uh, move forward towards uh, two other types of configuration. One is known as a common base configuration and common collector configuration. Obviously, the multi-stage kind of thing. So what is the takeaway from the common configuration? We have seen that for the common emitter configuration, the gain is almost uh, say moderate to some extent. You can have some moderate gain, and for uh, if you don't have some mechanism, in that case, again, it's not that much stable. Right? The game is a, yeah. This gain is a function of your temperature and the transistor properties and all. Yeah. Uh, and is moderately large. Operation also moderately large. But still, this common uh, amplifier is having some disadvantages that you will understand in the later on, later, later course. I mean, the next unit you will understand what are the limitations of this common amplifier. And that's why people have preferred for the other kinds of amplifiers. For where this emitter terminal is not considered as a common terminal. In one case, you will see that the base terminal is considered as a common terminal, which is known as a common base configuration. Finally, the common collector configuration, or is the collector is the common terminal. And then we will also study the different types of multi-stage amplifiers, like common emitter, common base cascading, common emitter, common collector, and so on. Okay. So with this, let me conclude my uh, today's uh, discussion.